Welcome to MIC's new video series, Trading Basics. I'm your host. Many of you may know me from chat as Joe Kelly. I'm one of the moderators of the room. I'm excited to share this series with you, but before we get into it, let's get this. This is for education only disclaimer language out of the way. Because kids, like a bad infomercial, there's more. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get into how this series is going to be broken down. We're going to break it down into four episodes. Episode one, we're going to go over terms and definitions, and then stock quotes, just to familiarize yourself with the language and verbiage. Episode two, we're going to go over order types and order entry, and then do some level two and time and sales. Episode three, we're going to go over pattern and day trader rule, and then we're also going to go over brokers, the MIC recommended brokers and some little tips and tricks for those. Episode four, we're gonna go over trading software like Sterling and DOS Trader, and then also we will do a little bit of Trader's Workstation as well. We will also review scanners on top of that. So without further ado, let's get into the topics for this episode. Market terms and definitions. Understanding the different markets and how the stocks that trade on them tend to perform is crucial. We will just be going over a few basic things though, such as uh, what is a stock uh, or equity. A stock is simply just a share in the ownership of a company. Exchanges and the different ones are also important to know, such as the NASDAQ, the NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange, the AMEX, OTCBB, which is OTC Bulletin Boards, Pink Sheets, and even gray sheets. Now pink sheets and gray sheets, the things to know about those are those are very what you call dark or defunct companies. These are the companies that have very little regulation. Uh, this is where you find those true boiler room pump and dumps uh, and pure manipulation. So beware, proceed at your own risk. I encourage everyone to read about uh, the difference between these markets and the stocks that trade on them. Some of the differences could be very important in your development as a trader and what market or markets you would like to focus on. Next we have market cap classifications. These are going to be mega caps, which is any company greater than 300 billion. Large caps between 10 billion to 300 billion. Mid caps 2 billion to 10 billion. Small caps, 300 million to 2 billion. Micro caps, 50 million to 300 million. Nano caps, less than 50 million. And then we're back down to true penny stocks, which trade on the OTC market, pink sheets, and gray sheets. So be familiar with what a penny stock is and what a small cap is. There's a big difference, especially in what they are required to file, uh, required by regulation to uphold certain shareholder equity and so on and so forth. So very important to know the differences of those. The next set of definitions are shares outstanding. Total amount of common stock that is currently issued by the company. Okay, The float is the total amount of common stock available to freely trade in the open market or the public. Okay. To determine the float, you take the shares outstanding and then minus any shareholders with positions greater than 10%. These are considered insiders, and in order for them to sell any of their position, they have to file. Low floats, we qualify generally as anything less than 10 million shares. Micro float, anything less than 3 million. Nano float, less than 1 million. The lower the float, the higher the risk. Okay. ETFs or exchange traded funds, these, these are vehicles, these are trading vehicles that operate within an arbitrage mechanism designed to keep it trading close to its net asset value, although deviations can occasionally occur. ADRs are American Depository Receipts. A negotiable certificate issued by a U.S. bank representing a specific number of shares or specified number of shares or one share 
and a foreign stock traded on a U.S. exchange. These will tend to trade different in terms of price movement compared to just a standard stock. Volatility. This is the lifeline, the bloodline to the markets. This is a measurement of range of a specific time frame, which can simply just be the high minus the low. Volatility is always a positive number, but you can also define it as maybe day's range, all kinds of different things such as beta and so on. But volatility is the lifeline, it is the heartbeat of the markets. Without volatility, there are very few trading opportunities. Volume, number of shares traded on the day, including pre-market and after hours. This is the number of shares, okay? Liquidity is the number of trades occurring on the day. This is different. Number of shares is just one share is one part in volume. Liquidity, this could be 4,000 shares executed on one trade, but that means that 4,000 will show in the volume but only one trade will show. So this is very important to know. The more trades that have executed, the better the liquidity and vice versa. Lower the liquidity, higher the risk involved. This means that you may not be able to exit your trade at the price that you want. So very, very important. All right, let's dive into reading a quote. This is off of Yahoo Finance. Apple Inc. is who we have pulled up. This will say the corporation name and the ticker right up here in the top. This will tell you the market that it's traded on, which is the NASDAQ. It is a real-time price right here. The currency is U.S. dollars. This is important to note because some tickers will trade in a different currency. It could be in uh, Canadian dollars or anything past that, but it will tell you what currency it trades in right here. 165.48 was the last price. It is down on the day, $5.47, which is equivalent to negative 3.2%. That means that from the previous close, 170.95, it's down $5.47, which is equivalent to 3.2%. And then tomorrow, the previous close will say 165.48, and then whatever the price action happens past that point will display here. The open price is equal to 169, which is the first execution that happened on the day at market open at 9.30 Eastern. The bid is 165.09 by 1100, which is the size, the bid size. It's 1100 shares. The ask is 165.25, and the ask size is 1400. We'll get more into level two, but that's in another episode. Today's range reached a low of 165.29 all the way up to 169.08. This can be a measurement of volatility right here. This is what we talked about in the previous slide. 52-week range, 150.24 is the low, 233.47. The markets like to measure volatility of a particular stock in terms of a 52-week range as well. So there is also the day's range, the 52-week range, and really whatever range you want to measure. Volume on the day, 36, 730, 765, that's 36 million. Average volume, 38.8. Market cap, this is a $785 billion company, so that would be classified as a mega cap. Beta, beta is also a measurement of volatility. The higher the beta, the more volatility this particular stock has on average. The lower the beta, the lower the volatility. P.E. ratio, price to earnings, EPS, is earnings per share. This is the next earnings date that we expect from Apple between January 30th and February 4th. Forward dividend and yield, ex-dividend date, and one-year target estimate. And that's a wrap for episode one, kids. Thanks for watching MIC's video series, Trading Basics. I've been your host and will continue to be your host for many, many more of these. As time progresses, we'll get into much more detailed content, but for now, we're just reviewing the basics. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a PM in MIC's chat. Stay tuned for the next episode of Trading Basics and see you soon.